Well, the, the style that I'm best known for is, is techno-romantic. That's a name I came up with uh, basically in the early 80s to describe the nature of the work that I had evolved in the previous five years. And uh, in, in, in college uh, at the time, I was ended up being a theater major, so I was uh, doing set design and lighting. And I was really, really highly influenced by all of the Bauhaus uh, theater designers and all this kind of stuff. And I didn't know it, but, it, but eventually that was going to lead into actually applying that kind of design thinking to uh, jewelry objects. And so kind of in the mid-70s, I began um, experimenting with using found objects and, and plexiglass and um, odd materials and everything and putting them together into pieces that um, really didn't look like jewelry at all. Uh, and I gave up uh, polishing things and started steel wooling everything and producing matte finishes on them and really kind of stepping outside the bounds of any kind of traditional reference to uh, kind of jewelry making because I I'm really not a jeweler. Uh, I'm, I'm an artist working in the medium of jewelry. Now, one of the things I got out of those high school art programs was a really strong uh, drawing capability. Because uh, one, of the, one of the assignments we, we'd get on a regular basis would be to go out into the environment of our city or wherever and, and draw things, you know. And then we were taught all kinds of drawing techniques. So uh, I've been a fairly good at being able to um, depict what's in my brain on paper uh, ever since. And for me, it's a really critical part of the process of being able to imagineer the eventual object by first seeing it on paper. The translation of an object uh, in its prototypical form to a place where it can be made in multiples necessarily implies that there have to be exact drawings that you work from in order to do that. Because everything starts at a small scale and eventually transitions to a large one. They, and I keep extensive notebooks of drawings and notes. Sometimes it just a notebook will just have a lot of words in it that will re-stimulate an idea that I had initially about how to put something together. Well, I, I get asked a lot uh, by young artists or people interested in being artists about how to go about a professional practice. My advice to them is that you have to know everything and that you can't do it alone. And the reason for that is that I believe that the objects that are made by artists, craft artists uh, of every stripe, are imbued with a kind of energy that uh, is detectable. I actually believe that the objects that we make and sell as artists are representative of an energy connection that is made with the client who respects that and wants to have that object in their possession uh, and it completes a circle. And I saw my gallery as being a conduit for that kind of uh, uh, interaction and connection. New Orleans has had an enormous impact on, uh, on me as a designer and an artist, of course. I came here in 1977 to exhibit my work at Jazz Fest, and I've been at Jazz Fest every year since. I recently figured out that I've spent three quarters of a year of my life at the fairgrounds. The visual environment of New Orleans is absolutely spectacular in its influence on uh, not only the, specifically on the work that I do, but on the ambiance and the feeling of um, oh, acceptance and um, nurturing. So it's one of the few cities, I think, in the United States that has already this kind of assemblage kind of a look to it. You know, because here you have, you know, you have, you have Victorian buildings, but then you have ironwork on them that comes from someplace else. And so all of these kind of architectural styles were kind of all mashed together here and transformed in really unique ways. Uh, New Orleans, really what New Orleans is, is a, the primary incubator opportunity for artists, no matter what medium they might work in. Now, maybe New Orleans has a traditional reputation for the kind of work that is come out of the city, uh, you know, over the uh, centuries here. Uh, artists live here because they can afford to live here and work here. The work that's being produced here is as cutting edge as it is any place else in the country. And so, yeah, New Orleans, enormous.
enormous influence on me.